Charles. Uh, welcome back. Uh, first, a quick bit of consumer news. Uh, this week, the German super supermarket chain Aldi opened in Ireland. Irish customers queued for hours before the opening, demonstrating just how keen they are to get their hands on some German sausage. <laughs> uh, we'll now go to Mr. Pussy for the rest of this joke. Well, I have a nice butcher, Norman Houston. He's a lovely butcher. He never puts his meat up. <laughs> Two for that. Two. Two for the plug. I heard you could drink Norman Houston under the table, though. Is that true? Well, when I've had one drink... <laughs> when I've... <laughs> when I've had one drink, I don't feel it. When I've had two drinks, I just about feel it. When I've had three drinks, anybody can feel it. <laughs> OK, as uh, usual, we've been bes uh, besieged with uh, phone and email comments since we've come on air. Uh, Dorothy Felching from Leitrim. Uh, is in prison, so she didn't send anything uh, this week. Uh, another email says, I'm a guard and I was delighted to see that the pub closing time for the millennium has been put back to 1.30. If the pubs had stayed open all night, there would have been trouble, and us guards would have been far too pissed to arrest anybody. <laughs> uh, another one here, uh, this one reads, uh, I'm a leprechaun, and I was well annoyed to hear about this American TV show, which depicts the Irish as a bunch of violent drunks. I'm telling you, I really want to get tanked up and kick the crap out of a few yanks. <laughs> what do you think? Well, I'll be ready for them, dear. <laughs> it's, um, it's Columini is, is apparently playing a leprechaun in this, isn't it? And That's it's right. hardly as if Columini is known for his uh, good at stereotyping of Irish people. Like, in the past, he's been, uh, leave it to Mr. O'Brien on, on Star Trek, where, That's you right. know, we, we've got a problem with the warp factor. The engines have gone down. What do we do? Captain, why don't we why don't we get an old van? We'll buy it off Brendan O'Carroll. We'll do it up and we'll sell chips out of it during the Intergalactic Wars. How about that? <laughs> uh, time now for another audience question. Uh, this one is from uh, Ronan Lee from Dundrum. Good evening. I'm Puff Daddy, but you can call me Puff. I'm over here for the MTV Music Awards. I, I'm so excited I brought over all the whole family. Cream Puff, Sugar Puff, and Puff the Magic Dragon. I, the panel, as puffed up as I am. <laughs> well, I'm Mammy Puff. <laughs> Indeed, uh, over the next few days in uh, Dublin, it's going to be a flurry of fur coats, tattoos, dreadlocks, no studs, and huge gold jewellery as the cocaine dealers line up to meet the visiting pop stars. <laughs> so, what do you think, folks? Nothing well, unusual in that. It doesn't have to happen in the world to do that sort of thing in town anyway, do you really, dear? When you think of it. So, every night, it's true, though, isn't it? So basically, you've got one joke, and it's that you dressed up as a woman. <laughs> it's a bit strange. Or, or am I missing something? No. It's you held it up for 20 no. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's been dying to do that all day. No. It's funny, in a bed of roses, you always get one prick, don't uh. you? <laughs> My mother had asked me not to say anything nasty to Mr. Pussy because she actually comes from the same area as, as Mr. Pussy. Middle and, sex. <laughs> but she remembers when she was a kid that the, the people were running up and down on the street one day saying, God, listen, you won't believe this. The pussies are after calling their son Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, Dara, what do you think? Well, it'll be no surprise to anyone. I'm unimpressed by the whole thing. Uh, yeah. I don't think it's particularly good at all, because I remember the good old days before celebrities used to be dropping into Ireland, before we were so cool. They were the days of the Irma Awards, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and they were our awards, ladies and gentlemen. And we were so proud. And every year they come on and they go, it's time for the Irmas with guest stars. Dicky Rock, a white snake, and a roadie from U2. Uh, and we're, we were happy in our simple little way that every year, for some blind optimistic way, they'd stick in best international male and best international female. Like, and it was a disaster every year. And I found out why. Irma, actually, I used to thought you to stand for something, Irish record music. It doesn't. I looked up in the dictionary. It's an old verb that means cannot be with us tonight. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Roughly the way it went. And all schools all over the country, they teach it in a kind of Madonna Irma, uh, my Ricky Martin Irmo, Backstreet Boys, Irma Nina, no chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Roughly the way it worked, right? <laughs> Things got so desperate during the Irma Awards, they actually invented a special category called Best International Act We Could Get. Uh, and one year is great, because they went, uh, the nominations for Best International Act We Could Get are Krista Berg. Uh, and then there's a kind of a pause, they went, OK, that's all the nominations. Uh, and, uh, and then it would cut to a split screen of Krista Berg sitting in the audience going like, will I get it, will I get it, will I get it? And then, and then Jerry Ryan would go, and the winner is 
no winner this year. Uh, and, uh, and Chris would sit there and go, no, I rented the tux and the nanny and everything. Uh, and it's great. But the, the nanny's beside me and the wife is at home with the kids. Uh, it's grand, yeah. So it's awful. So now instead we have the fantastic MTV Awards. Thanks very much. They're all arriving. Boats and planes. Brittany, Whitney, Madonna, the whole lot. They're all jetting into lovely, cool Dublin. And they're delighted with themselves. And through it. But there are going to be some terrible problems with the whole thing. Because let's face it, they're not going to be wandering around the streets. They're not going to take the chance that the Lauren Hill is going to get into the back of a cab. Uh, <laughs> and the taxi driver is going to go, Fugees, refugees, I'll tell you about refugees. <laughs> uh, all about that, like. <laughs> or indeed, when Will Smith arrives in and says, where are the women getting jiggy? And they send him to Jury's Cabaret. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're just not going to give the chance, like, oh, the Britney Spears going, what will they do for a bit of food? They take her to the chipper, uh, and some local Dublin wag goes, don't stand too next to the counter, love. Those new tits might melt. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> So let's enjoy it while we have it, ladies and gentlemen, while we have these celebrities wandering around, because let's face it, Irma 2000 is only five minutes away, and we're back to Dickie Rock and White Snake. Whoa! <laughs> Thank you, Dara, and I have, to, I have to give them the same tits. Okay, uh, time now for uh, State of the Nation, where we seek to unearth the bigoted opinions of the average puff on the street. Uh, this week, bus and rail fares in Dublin are to go up. So Pat McDonald stood outside Connolly Station to find out if it's all worth it. That was Jimi Hendrix there, and he understood the whole problem of cross-town traffic in a big city. But obviously people here in Dublin don't, because Bus Air and Air Road Air and Dublin Bus are all putting up their fares by 5.5% in January. So I asked the people of Dublin what they thought about this. Bus and rail fares are going to be hiked up now in January. Can you see this causing any problems? For a lot of people without the money, yes. Yeah? Yes, of course. I heard a woman on the, on the, you might hear on the radio this morning, of a bus it's something in the centre of the city in, in O'Connell Street. It just be, she used to get to cab on it. She left her car at home. Now she has to go back to her car. But they have taken that stop away and they put it, have it, put it on for, I think it's tourists said or something. Now I don't know here about, it's up on the top of the <laughs> It's just scandalous. Mm. I see, I'm a senior citizen, I have a, a bus pass. It doesn't affect me, you know. But it affects me when I come into town. Now I left Scottish Town car. The bus is only every half an hour there. You should again put on another bus there. And they're only every half hour. I left quarter to 11. And here I am now at 25 minutes past 12. And I've, all I had stopped was for a paper. You know, that's, you know, that is, that is ridiculous. You know, in putting up the here. It's, it's going to people that go back to their cars because they're not going to be there. And then if you get on a bus, now I didn't know this till recently, you get on a bus and your, your uh, bus fare is 80 pence, you get no change. No. Where does that go? Dublin Bus and Rail are putting up their fares in January. Do you think this is going to cause any problems? Well, I don't know. Being from America, I would have no clue on earth. But You have uh, no clue on earth because you're American. Uh, what, do you think it's fair? Do you think they, they, we can afford it? No, we can't. Right. But no, that's a pity you missed. <laughs> has never achieved or they never why doesn't someone take it over maybe there should be an armed coup or something an armed coup i don't know what there should be but i know what i would like to do with some of them really like, the ones at the top Probably. strangle them oh so from a very blustery traffic log dublin that's all from me bye bye thanks for that Pat. Okay, there are still some important issues to address, which we will now do in Putting the World to Right, the part of the programme where our panel of experts reveal the truth behind the week's headlines in just 90 seconds. We'll start putting the world to right from now. In Germany recently, a suitcase was discovered which may contain the original of what? Um, David Hasselhoff. <laughs> <laughs> Bungling council officials have caused a storm by changing the name of Knock to what? To uh, Knock Knock. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know who's there. <laughs> Mary Harney. Little old lady, I guess. <laughs> Little old lady who? <laughs> I didn't know I could yodel. <laughs> During 
the filming of a charity auction last week, John claude Van Damme stunned viewers by doing what on stage? Acting. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Williams admitted last week that he may give up what? Uh, sweets for Lent. Uh. <laughs> uh, last week, Beverly Cooper Flynn was allowed back into what? The George. <laughs> <laughs> For her party after the MTV Awards next week, Madonna has apparently booked out what? A night house in Ranelagh. Uh. <laughs> apparently, apparently, it's the place to be seen. Uh. <laughs> Chris Evans and Jerry Halliwell are apparently doing a what? A double act. The ginger pubes. <laughs> Boyzone's Shane Lynch last week shrugged off rumours of a split in his watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that answers that question, I think. Yeah. Is something to do with the little bald fella? <laughs> <laughs> the Labour Party has, de has described Emmett Stagg's call to decriminalise cannabis as what? That's like really heavy. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like, it's not illegal, but it's, it's not legal. Oh man, that's too much. Uh, <laughs> uh, that ends a half hour of uh, coming up with big ones. Uh, thanks for staying up to watch, plus adoration and love to our special guest, Mr. Pussy. Well, uh, as we go, uh, this week the NBC channel did, in the United States did indeed air the magical legend of, of the leprechauns, which features Irish actor Colm Meany as a leprechaun called Seamus Muldoon. So earlier on, I rang NBC with a question from a small village in the west of Ireland. Thanks for helping us feed the gondolas. Good night. Corporate communications. Oh, hello. Is that NBC? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, hello. Well, actually, it's madam, actually. Um, um, my name is Monica Lully. I'm, I'm ringing you from Ireland, from a little village in the west of Ireland called Ahas Graw. And the reason why I'm ringing you up is because there were stories in the papers over here about a programme you do, you do ha have going out called the Magical, the, the Magical Legend of the Leprechaun. Yes. Yes. No, and I was wondering now, it was because the stories here were saying that it was full of Irish people drinking and fighting and all that sort of thing, you know. And I, I was wondering, is it a documentary? No, it wasn't a documentary. All right, all right. It was just like a fictional show. Oh, really? Oh, I see now, because there, there was a thing in the, in, in, in the paper saying that the chief leprechaun was called Seamus Muldoon. And I was wondering, because I think I know him, he's married to my sister, and he's a tiny little fella as well. He used to have a great job painting skirting boards for people's houses, their houses, but then somebody stood in them by mistake, so he's living on compensation now. He built a little igloo of his own with the money. But it, it, it wouldn't be about him at all, no? No, I don't think it was about him. Oh, right, okay. All right, so it's, it's about leprechauns, though, all the same? Yes. Right. Could I ask you a question about that now? Is there any wife swapping in it? Because apparently leprechauns are mad into that sort of thing, you know? They're filthy, the whole lot of them. They make me want to vomit now, I must say. Is there any of that sort of stuff in it? Because I, I suppose they'll be showing it over here eventually, will they? I, I have no idea to tell you the truth. All oh, right, OK. Well, it's just no. Sorry now for bothering you now. It's just because they were, they, they were slagging it off here in the papers, and I'm sure, sure don't mind them, because the Irish are drunk most of the time now, you know. I'm sure you've probably never met an Irish person who wasn't drunk. You know, I'm half cut myself most of the time, to be honest with you, you know. Yep, I know what you mean. You know, I, or I'd say, do you, have you met many Irish people over there? Um, I, I actually, <laughs> um, have visited there, but I have not met a lot of Irish people here. Oh, right, okay. Oh, you've, you've been to Ireland now? Y yes. And, and wasn't everybody drunk when you were here? Uh, no, not everybody. Not every, well, no, right, there might be one or two, a few guards and that kind of thing, and nurses, they have to stay sober, you know. That's yeah. part of the job, you know. Yeah. Actually, though, I do have a little confession to make. There's actually no such thing as leprechauns. It's just a big scam to get money out of Europe, you know. Oh. Did oh. you know that? No, I didn't know that. All oh, right. Okay, well, I thought I'd pass that on to you, just in case, and I wouldn't want you to be embarrassed or anything like that, you know. Okay. All right. Well, well thank you very much. Thank you, too, now. Bye-bye. Slán o'alia. Yeah.